The theory that the universe cooled and evolved from a uniform mass of, say, a billion degrees is known as the Big Bang. Not some primordial explosion. The Big Bang theory explains how the mass evolved. If we were to extrapolate the Big Bang model further back in time by minutes before the billion degree mass, density and temperatures appear infinite, calculations become impossible, and known physics breaks down completely. Where the mass grew from is highly speculative. The ability of vacuum energy to inflate a tiny metaphorical seed into a universe is amazing. Some speculate how a tiny non-inflating universe can suddenly, via quantum tunneling, become a somewhat larger inflating cosmos. Another speculates space, time, before and after emerge later as expansion becomes more organized. Still another speculates there was no beginning, that if inflation continues forever, why couldn't the universe always have been inflating? There was a time about 13.7 billion years ago when our universe was this billion degree blob of plasma filled with radiation and traces of elements until about 370,000 years after that light photons then appeared as the ionized plasma formed into a gas that allowed electrons to combine with protons to form atoms. Over eons, the small forces of gravity in these new bits of matter and the addition of dark matter collapsed into galaxies. Hydrogen being the most abundant matter has formed regions of gigantic gas clouds mixed with space dust and when these swirling gaseous clouds become massive enough they then collapse in areas forming protostars continuing to attract more matter and in a runaway fashion internal pressure mounts igniting nuclear reactions and therefore a star is born one of the many stars within the hydrogen cloud we call stellar nurseries Later, when the star dies in a supernova, the new elements from the explosions are spread throughout our universe. This new matter accretes with other matter, forming larger particles. As the mass in each new particle increases, we have then accreted asteroids, planetoids, and planets. We still don't know exactly what dark matter is, and new theories have been given to ether that may replace not only the debunked luminous ether by Morley, but also the dark matter itself. Newer ideas on ether by teams Starkman, Zlaznik, and Ferrari at the University of Oxford propose that ether is a field rather than a substance which pervades space and time, and saying that if you removed everything else in the universe, ether would still be there. Adding also that ether field isn't to do with light, but something that boosts the gravitational pull of stars and galaxies, making them seem heavier. It does this by increasing the flexibility of space-time itself. We usually imagine space-time as a rubber sheet that's warped by massive objects. The ether makes the rubber sheet more bendable in parts, so matter can seem to have a much bigger gravitational effect than you would expect them from its weight. Calculations show this ether-induced gravity boost would explain the observed high velocity of stars and galaxies currently attributed to dark matter. Surprisingly, calculations reveal a close relationship between the threshold acceleration, which depends on ether, and the rate at which the universe's expansion is accelerating. Astronomers attributed this acceleration to something called dark energy, so, in a sense, ether is related to dark energy. The new ether was born from modifying physicist Jacob Bekenstein's MOND, or Modified Newtonian Dynamics, by Professor Glenn Starkman and his team. Our universe's expansion was determined by one method called redshift. All we see in space is illuminated by or directly from photons of light, and as photons travel in deep space, they lose energy and shift to the longer, redder wavelengths, as seen by astronomers. So distant objects appear in this part of the light spectrum. Another method was WMAP, or Wilkinson Microwave and a Stop Trippy Probe, NASA's satellite. It has produced the first full sky map of the microwave sky, still a work in progress with currently a resolution of one degree, or about the angular size of the moon. WMAP has erased lingering doubts of the existence of dark energy while limiting the density of hot and dark matter.
WMAP satellite has determined the age of the universe, the start of the key transitions of the universe, and the geometry of the universe, all from studying the cosmic microwave background or the light left over from the Big Bang that has shifted over to the microwave region due to the expansion of the universe. Our universe is bathed in this afterglow. This is the oldest light in the universe and has been traveling for some 13.7 billion years. It may also predict the ultimate fate of our universe, and a new hypothesis states that our universe and all matter in it may end in what has been called the Big Rip, that is, in which matter of the universe, from stars to galaxies to atoms and subatomic particles, are progressively torn apart by the expansion of the universe. About 60 million years before the end, gravity would be too weak to hold the galaxies together. And approximately three months before the end, the solar systems will be gravitationally unbound. In the last minutes, stars and planets torn apart. And in an instant before the end, atoms will come undone or be destroyed. Still, theories exist about the creation of many universes. If the idea of eternal inflation is correct, infinite bubble universes constantly emerge in inflationary space when regions slow to a normal expansion rate. It's possible each bubble-like universe may have its own distinct physical laws, many of which might be incompatible with life.